All right, so welcome back. So today's lecture is going to be very short because all we need to cover to finish chapter one are Newton's laws. And the reason why we need to review Newton's laws of motion as well as Newton's gravitational law is because in the previous lecture we looked at kinematics where we saw techniques and methods to study the motion in a force-free environment. But when you think about a spacecraft orbiting a planet, there are obviously external forces being applied to our spacecraft and precisely gravitational forces. So in order to be able to solve the motion, we need to invoke dynamics. And again, the basis to start with dynamics is to review Newton's laws. So first up, we have in 1.5.1, we have Newton's laws. of motion. So there are three laws of motions derived by Newton. The first one is known as the law of inertia. And that law says that unless being acted by an external force, a particle in motion will remain in, uh, in said motion without any deviation. will remain in a rectilinear motion, okay? Uh, let me just write it down for you for completeness. So this law states that unless acted upon by a force, a particle will remain in its state of rest or will remain in a straight line motion with constant inertial velocity. Okay? So all this to say that unless you perturb or push or pull on particle, well that particle will just continue its motion. Okay? That's obvious. And this is the law we observe in my laboratory, where we have the granite uh, table upon which are floated spacecraft platform. And because of that, they aren't experiencing any frictional effects. And as such, if you were to push a platform in my lab, the platform would continue traveling with constant velocity in its initial direction without any deviation. Thanks to the law of inertia as stated by Newton. Okay, so that was the first law of motion discovered by Newton. The second one, which is probably his most famous law, is his F equal MA law. Okay, so in a vector form, you just say that the net force being applied to a particle is equal to the mass of a particle times its acceleration in a vector form. We could also reformulate that to solve for the acceleration that the particle will experience given the net force being applied to it. All right, pretty self-explanatory. One thing to realize here is that this acceleration you see on the left-hand side of that equation is always the inertial acceleration. All right, so again, the acceleration in Newton's second law, if you call ma, is always the inertial acceleration. Always, always, always. Such that 
you could say that this is the velocity vector, inertial derivative, or equivalently, the double inertial derivative of the position vector r. And this is why we studied previously how to relate the inertial acceleration to the non-inertial acceleration because it was such a big deal to obtain the inertial acceleration, right? By virtue of Newton's second law that we're gonna reuse ultimately in chapter two to come up with the spacecraft orbital dynamical equation. Okay? So second law of motion by Newton. Finally, we're down to the last one. So this is the law of action reaction which says that for every applied force there is an equal an opposite reaction force. Okay, so if you have a particle, say M1, and a particle M2 of there, if M1 exerts a force on M2, say it's pulling on M2 like that with F21 well then M2 will also exert the force on M1 of equal magnitude but in opposite direction F12 all this to say that if F21 is the action you're gonna get a reaction in the opposite direction like that, where F21 is equal to minus F12. Okay? So same magnitude, yet opposite direction. What did I just said here? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> F21 is not equal to minus F21. So if if you have F21 like that, you get F12 like this, and they are in equal magnitude but opposite direction. Okay, that's all. That's all I wanted to say. Apologies for that. All right. So these are the three laws as stated by Newton, but perhaps. The most important one in our context here is the law of gravitation. Newton's law of gravitation. In 1.5.2. Let's consider a case again where we have two masses, M1 and M2. And now we're looking specifically at gravitational forces. So we have M1 attracting M2 towards itself. So the force being denoted F21 as previously. So we're going to say that F21 vector is the force. Of attraction on M2 by M1. So M1 attracts M2 essentially. And then you have in the opposite direction F12 or F12 is the force of attraction applied on M1 exerted by 
m2. And again, by virtue of Newton's third law, they are equal 92 yet in opposite direction. Now, Newton was able to quantify mathematically those gravitational forces or attraction forces by virtue of the fact that those point masses have a finite mass, the kilogram, and the way they're quantified is F21 is equal to minus capital G, where this is known as the universal gravitational constant times M1 times M2 times R21 where R21 is the position vector of mass 2 with respect to mass 1 and that. I'm just going to move my F12 over here. And that makes a lot of sense because if R21 is to the right, then you get F, if R21 is to the right, F21 is to the left, like that, in opposite direction. And all this is divided by R21 in terms of the position of M2 with respect to M1. The norm of that, Q. So this is quantifying the gravitational forces of M1 attracting M2 towards it. And similarly, you could solve for F21, or sorry, F12, by saying that this is now a force in the same direction as R21. So this time we don't have the minus in front of everything. So G, M1, M2, R21, position vector over the distance between those two masses, Q. By the way, this gravitational constant, you don't have to remember that on top of your head. In an exam, I'm going to provide all constants for you. But for completeness, this constant is given by 6.6732 times 10 the negative 11 newton meter square over kilogram square and this concludes chapter one all right so in chapter two we're going to start right away by using those gravitational forces specifically in case of a planet attract, attracting a spacecraft towards itself and thereby creating an orbit around itself. Okay? Hope you enjoyed chapter one. Congratulations, you survived. And that wasn't an easy chapter to go through. It was pretty dry, a lot of new theory, new mathematical operator, mathematical objects, the vector C's, the hollow dot, all those great things. But you made it thus far. Congrats, and I'll see you again in chapter two soon. See you.